U.S. officials are considering a formal review of Tether uh, and other, or, or rather whether Tether and other stable coins threaten financial stability, as reported by Bloomberg. Uh, there are over 125 billion stable coins in the crypto market. And joining me to discuss is Jeremy Allaire, CEO of Circle, a global payments firm and one of the creators of USDC, the second largest stable coin with $30 billion worth in circulation. Welcome to the show, Jeremy. Thank Great you. to have you. Great, Great to see you. you. All right. So stable coins are obviously integral to the crypto market. A lot of traders rely on them to get in and out of positions. It's the foundation of the crypto markets. And so when you hear regulators exploring whether or not they should uh, regulate stable coins, yeah. what, what are your thoughts? Are they, is there any uh, support to the idea that they threaten st financial stability? Well, it's, it's, um, I think it's, it's important, obviously. Um, the growth in dollar stable coins has been astounding in the last year. And I think, you know, the FSOC review, which I think is one of the things that's being mm -hmm. discussed, is really looking at if they've grown this far, this fast, uh, what could it look like in two years, three years, five years? And could this become something that's sort of systemically scaled? And um, you can imagine, uh, given the utility value of dollar digital currencies and what they provide, that you could imagine a world where there's a trillion uh, you know, dollar stable coins in circulation. And at that point, it would be a critical payment infrastructure for financial markets, for uh, payment activity. And so at that point, I think, um, you know, federal supervision makes sense. It's one of the reasons why we are, you know, actively working towards a, a national bank charter as well. Mm -hmm. And what should that look like? Should the, how, how, should, how far should that transparency go? Yeah, you know, um, I think, as I like to say, there's not an exam manual at the Fed or the Treasury for how to, you know, supervise a, a stablecoin uh, infrastructure. So there's a, a lot of work that's been done by regulators around the world, the FSB making recommendations. I think we're going to hear more about those recommendations through the presidential working group. And it has to do with, you know, liquidity. It has to do with information security, cybersecurity, um, the, the kind of... Uh, fundamental risks that exist, money laundering risks, these kinds of things. So those things are going to be uh, in scope. So uh, as it currently turns out, I mean, with Tether, most of their reserves we learned was uh, backed by commercial paper. Uh, Paxo saying that most of their reserves are backed by cash and cash equivalents. USDC seems to be somewhere in the middle. So we actually announced uh, last month that USDC is, in fact, uh, moving entirely to cash and cash equivalents uh, uh, within this month, in fact, and so we've made great progress on that. Uh, and I think we're hearing, you know, the market and what they're looking for. Regulators, I think, uh, looking out ahead. And uh, I, I think our view is, if if you're building critical financial infrastructure like this, that's what people expect today. And we'll see where, you know, rule sets go in the future. Uh, currently, is is uh, USDC backed by commercial paper and the like, and, and it was your view that perhaps it wasn't stable enough to back the, the stable coin? We've, We've always, always op operated within the um, state banking statutes, basically, which, uh, you know, for a money transmission firm, you have to have a full one-for-one -one backing, and you have to ensure that that's from a consumer protection perspective in place. We're examined and regulated by the supervisors, always have been. I think we're just listening, I think, clearly to the market and what the market is looking for in this space. And also, I think, getting a, a little bit of a sense from comments from regulators on where they think this ought to go and really just trying to be lined up with market expectations. Do you think uh, other stable coins like Tether that are backed by commercial paper should perhaps benefit from a little more regulation and clarity on uh, what is backing their reserves? Well, I mean, I, I can't comment so much on, on their practices, um, but what, what I would say is, you know, we believe very strongly that a very large scale dollar market infrastructure that's at the center of not just payments, but capital markets activity clearly needs to be a supervised activity. What do you say to those concerns by some lawmakers out there that the, there could be a loss in confidence of some of these stable coins and a yeah, I mean, this is going to get into uh, ultimately if, if there are that get uh, developed, you know, that have to do with fundamental liquidity. I mean, obviously, there is a framework for that through Basel III and how that framework can apply, whether it's to banking or a stable coin. And, and so I think everyone is just trying to get their arms around, you know, what does this look like at scale? 
Okay. So that conversation is ongoing, obviously. Uh, also, a lot of platforms are launched lending products. Uh, Circle Yield proposes to offer over 6% uh, if you get onto a wait list. Coinbase Yield product, uh, they're offering their lending product. You can earn 4% APY on USDC. And obviously this has uh, caused a lot of controversy because the SEC has saying that this yield product is a security. Coinbase wants an explanation. They're saying that they're not really getting any. And I just wonder, what was your reaction to Coinbase getting this Wells notice, which is an intent to sue uh, based on this product? Yeah, I mean, obviously I, I don't have visibility into specific deliberations between Coinbase and the SEC. Um, but uh, what, what I would say is, you know, uh, our yield service, which has been in the market now and we're actively offering it, um, we actually structured it as a security um, and we only offer it to accredited businesses uh, and it, you know, is operating under, uh, you know, the, the rules of exempt uh, you know, securities in the United States. Um, now, that was our analysis uh, when we decided to make this product available. I can't comment on other firms' uh, approach. So you think it's quite clear that these products are like securities, they should uh, go through rigorous... Well, uh... for, for what we intended to offer in providing a way for businesses to invest their USDC and, and, and earn a fixed income return, it, it did really strike us that it would be best structured as a security. So BlockFi is also being um, investigated by several states, Alabama, New Jersey, Texas, saying that their lending product is probably a security and they shouldn't operate in the states. BlockFi is saying that perhaps the SEC should just have a blanket uh, rule on these products. Would you, would you agree with that line well, what of thinking? I would, I would completely agree that the industry needs clarity here. Um, and obviously we don't face retail investors and I think investor protection concerns uh, really are paramount for retail investors and I think that's where a lot of the scrutiny is. Um, but I would agree there is no uh, regulatory framework for crypto lending in the United States. Uh, you know, we, we had to you know, find a regulator that wanted to supervise crypto lending activity uh, because that doesn't exist in the United States yet. Mm -hmm. Looking ahead, what what is coming up for Circle? You have a, you're going public with the merger with a SPAC that could val that values Circle at about four and a half billion dollars. Tell me a bit about your path going forward and your vision, your journey of becoming a bank. Yeah, I mean there there are a lot of pieces. Obviously, uh, earlier this year we raised four hundred and fifty million dollars, and so we're in you know significant investment and expansion mode. Uh, you know, building out different you know product lines of businesses. Uh, obviously, there's a process of becoming a public company, which is, you know, uh, a journey we're on, uh, and that will take whatever, you know, time it, it, it takes. And then, yes, um, I think uh, as we've looked forward and we've thought about ultimately the, the nature of a global scale stable coin such as USDC and the other products and services that we ultimately want to build around it, uh, we made a decision that we did want to pursue this path of becoming a, a national, you know, full reserve digital currency bank. Uh, which hasn't been done yet, so it's going to be a journey. I don't expect it to be a quick journey, um, but uh, we're, we're excited about what that represents for for the industry and, and ultimately what we can build. Mm -hmm. And what do you, what kind of insights are you getting at this conference? You're speaking to a lot of hedge funds, the people in traditional finance. Are you? Is it an education for them, or are they on top of things and they truly are interested and want to get on board? It's amazing. I mean. I, I wouldn't have expected a year ago or two years ago that SALT would be overrun by, uh, you know, crypto firms and, 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 and being on the agenda and everything. I think it's been, it's been, in, it's been really interesting. I mean, so many uh, funds, investors, family offices, others, not yet in the space, but really trying to figure out how to get active in this space. So I, I think um, it's, uh, it's a learning curve for a lot of people. There's so many new things, DAOs, NFTs, DeFi. What is this? You know, I think people are finally getting their arms wrapped around. I could have an allocation of Bitcoin in my portfolio. But then when you open the kind of uh, Pandora's box, it's like, wow, there's so much there. So I think people are really just trying to get their head wrapped around all of the dynamic things that are happening. And, and do you feel that the way USDC has been structured and uh, the operations behind it has been more geared toward uh, alleviating the concerns of risk uh, for those types of investors. Yeah, I mean, I think um, there's folks that want to actively own something like Bitcoin or Ether. Um, and then, you know, through USDC yield products, there's a way to participate in the market uh, without directly, you know, purchasing something like Bitcoin. And I think that's attractive to a lot of people.